Good morning. Things seem to come back to some semblance of normal. And yes, again, my encouragement is that we do good, practical things. Wear our mask, wash our hands, continue to do social distancing. I've watched several times as I've driven to the city or gone to different places, of course, always on essential business. But folks just bunching up. Two days ago, someone came to visit me, you know, again from the beach to pick up something, and you know, they were covered with sand. I said, oh yeah, me and my friends are down there doing this, this, this. Did you say, oh, we don't need to do that anymore. Yes, you do. Because the idea here is our safety. These are public health concerns. And so again, my encouragement to you this morning is to continue to practice the things that the city says do, the CDC says do, because as we open up our economies, as we open up our cities, again, we want to be safe. We do not have, want to have a resurgence of what's going on. In the process of that, we're always asking ourselves, is God speaking? Where is God? How do I hear God? In the middle of all these things that continue to come at me because even though we get to go outside a little more, even though we get to do a few things differently, there's still that gnawing fear in us. There's still our anxieties. There's still our isolation fatigue. So what do we do with that? How do we handle that? Well, understand, today I want to encourage us to do something that Jesus did, and that is find solitude. Now, solitude is like stillness, because they're basically one and the same. How do I go and hear the Father? How do I withdraw? As you read through the scriptures several times, Jesus withdraws to hear from the Father. Jesus goes away by himself to pray, to be with the Father to commune, to help and to abide, and let the Father speak deeply into his heart. Don't you think Jesus had stressors? He's the, he's the Son of God. Yes, he's God. But Jesus is also 100% human. Remember, there are times before the crucifixion that people wanted to stone him. There are times when people wanted to make him king. And Jesus is very clear about what he was here to do. And to do that, to constantly hear from the Father, he had to withdraw. Two of our favorite prophets We've done the same thing. Jeremiah in chapter 15, verse 17 says, I didn't sit in the circle of the merry makers, nor did I exalt and, and, and celebrate all the time. No, because your hand was upon me and went up by myself. If we want the Father's hand to be upon us, sometimes we need to just back up a little bit to withdraw, to be with him. Isaiah picks up on the same, same idea. It says, thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in repentance and rest you will be saved. In quietness and trust your strength will be renewed. Now, the end of that verse, he says, but you weren't willing. Because often we're too busy. I know that in my own life. Isolation, being still before the Father, was very hard. Even today, I've heard some true introverts going, this isolation, this social distancing, this being by myself, this aloneness is bothering me. I'm like, gee, that's a person who loves it when no one's around. Well, the issue here is that the Father has created us as social creatures. And as social creatures, we want to be with people. And so the idea here, the cure for this, is stillness before the Father. Now we don't like that idea. Why? Because stillness means waiting. And we don't like that idea. Why? Because we're activists. We want to keep going. Even the introverts amongst us. We want to keep doing. We want to do things. We want to get done now, 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 now. And the Father says, no, I want you to be still. The real cure for aloneness, the real cure for loneliness is time with the Father. When you feel like the inside of your skin is crawling out because you want something, you need some interaction, the idea here is remember what Isaiah says. In repentance and rest you will be saved. In quietness and trust you will find strength. Why? Because when we give the Father our loneliness, when we give the Father our loneliness, He speaks into our hearts with His Spirit that we understand 
and know Him better. That's why stillness is so important. I know we've been in isolation for nine weeks and there are people who are on our nerves. Our children are making too much noise. We don't know how to plan. We don't know how to do these kinds of things. We cancel our trips. All of these things, our, our jobs that we're, if we we're working, want more out of us. We're trying to figure out what's going on here. Because in isolation, in these times, we have to understand, as, uh, as Axwell Munth says, the Swedish writer, a man can stand a lot as long as he can stand himself. There's times I can't stand myself because I'm going crazy. So what do I do? I withdraw to the Father. Hebrews helps us here. It's one of my favorite illustrations in all of Scripture. It says, come into the throne room. Come to the throne of grace where you may find help and rest in the time of trouble. Now in my head, because I can imagine a whole lot, I imagine this huge throne room. God is sitting there on the throne with all of his majesty and the, and the elders are all around the throne and, his, and, the, and the seraphims and everyone is singing. And the father says, come in here. Come on. Come on. What do we do? Now, most of us, as you know, if you've been watching the Queen of England and other royalty, you get to the royalty, you get to their throne room, and you genuflect, you bow, and all of this. You know, because it's royalty, you're in awe, it's majesty. Yet God says something different. He says, come. Come up here. Sit with me. Now, I know some of you are old like me, but imagine... And the Father says, come to the throne of grace that you may find help and rest in time of trouble. He says, come, sit on my lap. Let me hear you. Rest in me. Why? Because that's stillness. Finding time to be with Jesus. Yes, it's frightening. It's hard to learn. It's hard to do because our life is so full of speed and busyness, all those things. The Father says in this time of anxiety, in this time of fear, in this time of want, come, be still before me. Rest here. Let me renew your strength here. Jeremiah says, your hand was upon me. So I went off by myself because I needed to hear from you. Jesus, every few days, every day, we would draw from the crowd. We would draw so that he can hear the Father speak to him. This is not... Nothing, this is nothing more than incisive listening to God and for God. Lord, speak to me. Lord, help me to hear you today. One last example. We just celebrated Easter a few weeks ago. And so we all talk about what happened Thursday night. Do you remember what happened Thursday night? Don't jump to the arrest yet. No. Don't stay in the upper room with dinner. No. What does Jesus do in the middle? He takes Peter, James, and John. And he says, guys, I need you to pray with me. So one, are your folks praying for you? But then two, Peter, James, and John fall asleep. And what does Jesus do? He goes a little further off. Again, by himself in stillness. And he prays that magnificent prayer before the Father. Lord, if there's another way, let this cup pass for me. He's in such intense prayer that drops of blood come down his face, as Luke tells us. But what happens after that prayer? Mel Gibson in his movie, The Passion, puts it so nicely. 
When Jesus finishes that prayer, he stands up erect and full of strength and power. As Luke tells us again, the angels come to minister to him. In the movie, he crushes steps on the head of the snake that's coming from him. Why? Because at that moment, in the quietness, Jesus' strength has been renewed. His trust has been renewed. Withdraw. Go be with Dad. Climb up into his lap and let him speak to your aloneness, your loneliness, your fear, your anxiety, your fatigues, whatever they are. Because his invitation is always, come, let us reason together. Lord Jesus, we bless you and thank you that, Lord, we get to crawl up into your lap Lord, thank you that you call us to stillness, to being still before you. Lord, our lives today are so full of, of busyness, so full of all the things that have come with this COVID-19, plus all the things that are already in our lives. Lord, we submit them to you. That, Lord, we would be able to be still before you in stillness. That, Lord, you would renew our strength and give us your rest, Jesus. These things, Lord, we pray in your holy your mighty and your blessed name. Amen.